Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. We have covered the Matteo Dioxa and Outbreak Perfected in our last video, showcasing the true essence of the build being used in endgame. I highly recommend you give it a watch, as it will give you an idea as to how to make Prismatic work so well for you. However, today's video is actually building up on this idea again, but making a few changes. Most noticeably, using our super more often within the build to escalate our arcane needle usage and also increase our damage, while also balancing out the speed of getting prismatic energy via darkness ability kills. By using this version of the build, you can garner fast ability and prismatic energy over time, easily have your super up before anyone else, have increased survivability with your items being used, and overall, be able to spam your melee without the need of mini perks or mods, just like last time. So here is kind of part 2 of the build, so let's start with exotics being used. To start with the general aim and the of the build, our aim is to make sure our prismatic and super energy is kept constantly filled up so we can use our melee as often as we like. We then need to improve on what we did last time with the given reason behind the changes. For this we will be using the Machio Dioxa and Bad Juju. To start with Machio Dioxa with the Zotic effect, Stylistics, it states Targets damaged by Arcane Needle emit a suspended detonation when defeated and landing multiple arcane needles on the same target immediately triggers a larger, more powerful detonation. Defeating suspended targets grants melee energy. Your arcane needles are strong against shield barrier champs. As mentioned before, the exotic relies on the user to use their strand melee to activate its effect and suspend targets to refill your melee charge again. You can use weapons that grant melee energy back to the user via kills or damage, but as shown before, you only need prismatic and your super to really pull this off. Our second exotic is the Bad Juju, with its exotic effect, String of Curses, which states, Kills refill the magazine, increase damage for a short duration, and grant super energy based on the strength of String of Curses. Now I know Bad Juju gets a bad name for not being as strong and potent to other pulses when being used in endgame, but now is honestly the best time to use it with the many buffs it has received. Firstly, as the weapon is a lightweight frame, it has initially received a damage buff for body shot and precision based damage by 6% for body shot and precision by 3% which allows for more faster and cleaner kills. And secondly, pulses in general receive a 20% damage buff against red bar enemies and since the weapon strings of curses also grant additional damage with that being capped at 50% you get a very very underrated but highly powerful pulse that you should be using ASAP. For aspects and fragments, we have the following. A feed the void where defeating targets with any ability kills will activate devour. Helion, where activating your class ability, will produce a solar mortar that will lob flaming projectiles at a distant target and scorch them. Facet or sacrifice, where while you have arc, solar or void buff, ability thunder blows will grant bonus darkness energy towards you. Facet or solitude, where landing rapid precision hits emit a severing blast from the target. Facet or Grace, where defeating targets with kinetic weapons grants you bonus transcendent energy. Defeating targets with your super grants you and nearby allies bonus transcendence energy. Facet or Balance, where rapidly defeating light targets grants mini energy. Rapidly defeating dark targets grants grenade energy. And Facet of Dominance, where your avoid grenade weakens targets and your arc grenade jolt targets. At best, we have kept the rest of the following fragments from the past video together as they best fit the overall theme the builder is going for. I have swapped out Facet of Dawn for Sacrifice instead as this was a key area that suffered the most when getting Dark Transcendence Energy easily. Our build only has the melee and Facet of Grace to help expedite the following area faster but even this wasn't enough when compared to how fast we can get our light abilities up for the prismatic side of things. Having this fragment instead will not only pair well with the aspects being used which have a near 100% uptime to them but overall it means that we don't need to worry about using our melee and weapon more often, just for those few kills required. Now with sacrifice available, we should be taking a few seconds more off from what we currently have and thus get our prismatic form back so much more faster. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked as our top priority with strength also playing a part. We won't be changing much here as the stats were fairly good and nothing too serious need to be changed. Resilience, we have all a tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. No key mods are needed for this area, as having just Devour is just enough to keep the potential of the user going. 
discipline, we have Arzad tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via Storm Grenades. As mentioned before, Storm Grenades are good for stunning overload champs on the moment's notice, and also jolting those nearby them as well. As the stat doesn't need much to work, I would advise you to have the following instead though. Have an impact induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff. Momentum transfer times 2 for a 17% melee buff. Outreach for a 12% melee buff. And distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. So for the additional mods being applied, we have the following. Kinetic Siphon for creating orbs of power via kinetic weapons. Charged up times 1 for a plus 1 in armor stacks we carry. Kinetic Weapon Surge times 2 for a 17% Kinetic Weapon buff. Ashes to Assets for a Super Energy Regen via Grenades. And lastly, Heavy Finder, Reserves and Scavenger for our Heavy Weapon we are using. As we have covered our Exotic Priming Weapon, I would then advise you to pick a Super Weapon for the build. These are all optional, but do hold some benefits towards the build. A secondary after Mahes HC form with Repulsive Brace and Destabilizing Rounds. Although we have the Dive class ability available for the quick health regen, I have found that even that isn't enough if you have to be using this in endgame, and this solely is because of the light level difference and how hard most enemies be hitting you. Since hand cannons are a viable choice for inflicting damage against champions, I would advise you to keep an eye out for the following, as this can be super useful in the more tougher content. Plus, its damage is also not that bad. Heavy, we have the Briar Contempt with Reconstruction and Power Cues Your Affinity, a powerful weapon that works really well against bosses and champs when I get my Power Cues Your Affinity perk active and going. I'm not going to change the heavy too much as this did work out pretty well for the build previously, especially against the enemies with the big crit spots. However, a machine gun with a large magazine reserve is probably the second best option to pick if you want something viable for all encounters. So to conclude the video, there's not really a lot to cover with the build when compared to the previous one we did as they both share the same ideology, design, advantages to disadvantages that they were both familiar with. With this being the case, it's best we break this down as to why the build is better than the endgame version, in as short a words as possible. Firstly, the build relies on our solar super and prismatic form to guard our king needles quickly, and while this was fine before, it lacked the feature to rebuild this back up quickly unless we relied more on the mods and orbs of power generated. The following now allows us a swift and easy way to navigate around this through the high usage of bad juju and facet of sacrifice added. With these here, we can fix the lack of super regen and darkness transcendent energy being provided. Secondly, damage output for the build is going to be much higher now compared to its original form, as with the added additions now applied, we have no reason to hold back, especially when using our melee. Lastly, the core design and function of the build can still be improved on further if you don't want to use what is shown, as truthfully, we still have many other ways and methods for getting our super and prismatic form back quickly. A quick and quite easy one to do is to use Traveller's Chosen with Fast Star Sacrifice, Grace and Devotion, add in a heavy weapon that can apply Strand or Status debuff, increase the charge with Light Slot to x2 and add in the Hands On mod for super energy as well. And there, you now have a build that is near one to one with what we currently have. This build can expand to greater heights if you really think about it. So while this build may not have any crazy new attachments, the following does show you just how powerful the base build already is, and how making a few changes can actually enhance the build to be even more greater and reach even more greater heights. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. Well, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. The dim link for the build is located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.